virtual lot is a very weird and confusing space to try and find what you want on sometimes. Yeah. If you don't know way. what you're asking for. It do be like that. It but do be. Our it's friends, overwhelming. It's, it's true. Our friends over at Shop Tour Bus have you covered when it comes to Grateful Dead inspired merch. Let and me tell you. soft, comfortable clothing. Yeah, man. Go check out at Shop Tour Bus on Instagram or go over to shoptourbus.com and check out all the Grateful Dead song inspired designs over there. I'm talking like Fire on the Mountain, Tennessee Jed. Um, Steal your out. tape even. Yep. There's a truck in design. Apple, help me out. You're on their thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm on their thing here. <laughs> their I, I, website. You're sleeping, <laughs> their dude. I am. Instagram. I, well, that, that's one thing I love with them. They come out with designs so often. Like I have the trucking one. Uh, the not they had the not fade away. They've Lazy got, lightning was the other one. Yeah, Lazy lightning. Let your love light shine. That was cute. They they have so many here. I mean, there is something for everybody. You can absolutely make a first and second set with all their t-shirts. That's for sure. And they come in a one of a kind hand designed box with all kinds of extras and goodies on the inside. And some of you are even going to get a miracle bootleg cassette tape in your order. A bootleg. Yeah, like the real thing that has been traded around our family for generations. They now. carry magic. They do. They do. They do. And 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 you you definitely want magic in your box. So, go to shoptourbus.com or at shoptourbus on Instagram, put in your order and make sure you put in the promo code no, no simple, simple road, road when you're checking out to get free shipping from the family over at Shop Tour Bus. Everybody that listens to this show knows how much I love coffee. Don't they? Yeah, I, I would yeah, think so. yes. <laughs> and you know that nothing makes me happier than having our very own coffee sponsor for No Simple Road. Thank you, Northbound Coffee Roasters. We love you so much. Yep. It's a family owned and operated coffee roastery out of Mount Shasta, California, with a combined 22 years of coffee experience and over 600 Grateful Dead and Fish shows. Between Keith and Jen, who run the show over there, they pursue top quality coffees to provide to us their loyal customers. That's that's who we are, everybody. Northbound Coffee Roasters specializes in specialty organic coffees with a wide variety of roast profiles, blends, and single origin offerings to match the taste of anybody who enjoys a cup of coffee, especially me. And you, especially you. It's about you guys, really, right now. Head over to northboundcoffee.com to learn more and place your order today. They ship anywhere in the U.S., and their coffees are always roasted to order to guarantee the freshest cup. And make sure to use the code NOSIMPLEROAD, all one word, at checkout for free shipping on your first order of any size. And I'm, I promise you that when this stuff comes, you're going to thank us and Northbound for bringing this into your life. It, it is it is one of the most exciting times around here. Uh, so go over there and make sure they have the happy camper out now, which is Peru's Northern Andes is where these beans come from with a bold, sweet, chocolatey, rich, full mouthfeel. Okay. Like, I can't wait till we get that one. All right. I'm in. Let's order some as soon as we're done. And we're going to use the promo code No Simple Road. And then last thing, a shout out to Bumper, a.k.a. Bam Bam, the the cat on their block that Aww. got hit by a car. Aww. Cute little Bam Bam. Yeah, He's man. on their Bam Instagram. Bam. Make make our, our family over at Northbound feel good. Go over there, order some coffee today because they lost Bam Bam. Man. So go, go hook them up. Yeah, man. Go to northboundcoffee.com. Remember, use that promo code, No Simple Road. No Simple Road is stoked to have Sunset Lake CBD back with us as our sponsor. Sunset Lake is the real deal. If you've looked around trying to find CBD and it just didn't do what it was supposed to do, this is the place you need to go. They've got every kind of product you can imagine, including CBD tinctures with sleep gummies that are great for getting to bed, CBD gummy bears and reishi infused chews that can help bring you a little bit of calm and a stressful day. They've got salve, they've got smokable hemp flower that's great for folks like me that don't want to get stoned and paranoid but want to have the benefits of cannabis. Well, now you got it. And they even carry CBD products for your pets, man. I'm saying this is Darwin approved stuff. Go over to sunsetlakecbd.com and check out the full range of what they have. This is Vermont grown right to your door and they're giving you 20% off. So put in the promo code NSR20 when you're checking out. You're going to get 20% off your whole order. And I know you're going to love it. They even have subscription options open for you. So you don't forget to get your medicine. Go check out Sunset Lake CBD, everybody. 
No Simple Road. Yeah, here we go. I know the road may seem to go on forever and a lifetime. Yeah. I, this this has been one that like I was excited for everybody to hear. This was one of those interviews for sure. Oh, hey, hey now, no super family. What's up, everybody? Oh, you really are recording. I, I really are. This never is Aaron. Know. You never know with me. It's Aaron and Mel and Apple, and we're back for another episode of No Simple Road. Yeah, No Simple Road. Like I was saying, yeah, as I gently leaned over and pushed the record button so sneakily. Um, I, I'm really excited for you all to hear this conversation we had with Dr. Jeff McNary from Rhythmia. Um, Rhythmia is a, well, it's actually the number one ayahuasca healing center for people committed to personal growth and seeking profound results. I couldn't That's have said it better myself. Quite man. a tagline. Yeah, man. And, and yeah, from our conversation with Dr. Jeff, you know, the ayahuasca world is is a uh, fraught with peril i i would say it's well, it, it, I'm not peril i wouldn't use that word there's a lot of it's very complex yeah and it's hard to know what exactly you're getting yourself into and i i all three of us actually were trepidatious about having this interview and yeah. Yeah. after talking with dr jeff it was like oh my god we got to go to rhythmia I, well, yeah i think we even mentioned that we did well we did we go, we don't like we say ever script anything and we didn't write anything down but we had discussed we had many questions yes yeah and we never even really got to them because jeff answered them all yeah, yeah. within the first few minutes all the things that we were trepidatious about behind the scenes um, he Jeff, addressed. He addressed um, without, like, in a natural conversation. He, and he didn't know. He had no idea that we were talking about anything before the the Zoom call started. No, so no. it was very serendipitous, and um, it speaks to the medicine. Yeah, I I think for sure. Um, I wanted to read this because I think it's worth reading, and then we can go into our okay. intro about okay. it. But in underneath their, um, you know, their website. It says, are you ready for the ultimate transfer life transformation? Come experience the Rhythmia Way, a top-rated ayahuasca-based comprehensive program recognized as the world's best. Located in Costa Rica, you will enjoy luxurious amenities, including a spa, gym, and saltwater pool, gourmet farm-to-table meals, daily yoga, breathwork, and empowerment classes from thought leaders. Awaken, heal, and experience a profound change you've been seeking with results that last before we talked to him. And if I would have read this, I would have really just kind of thought it was just, you know, somebody wrote really nice and yeah, it's whatever cool website. But after speaking with him, the, what they, the attention to detail based on all those things that I said, the, the meals, the way that they create the program and they've done trial and error and found out what works best for them and it really gave me confidence in bringing this interview to or this conversation to everybody because um, it, you know, plant medicine is very powerful mm -hmm. and it's very scary. Every, it's the first time at you do any kind of medicine um, is it's scary for prescription meds. If you, oh, if you yeah. have a, if you've got a brand new medication, you know, you're worried cause it's got Look, side man, effects. You ain't, you ain't and, never drank NyQuil before. It's scary. Yeah. <laughs> and so, <laughs> Straight so, up. And something that claims to transform your life. That sounds pretty heavy. Yeah, man. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that's what I mean by fraught with peril is that there's a lot of charlatans out there and, you know, folks that make broad and bold statements and claims that yes. they, you know, that has come happened within the, since ayahuasca's popularity. Yeah. And, yeah. and this th talking with Dr. Jeff and seeing the, the work that they're doing at Rhythmia 
made me a believer in, it, in what they're doing. In what they are yep. doing. And, and also, they're, they're, I mean, if you, if you go over to Rhythmia.com, R-Y-T-H-M-I-A.com, and that, that was one of the first things, too. I mean, anybody can put together a very impressive website, but the in-depth they go to and the links, and then you'll hear in the interview how open they are to, like, any kind of questioning or anything. Mm-hmm. This isn't a, like, well, sign up and you'll see. This is, the, you'll, you'll hear yeah. this. This it, is very reassuring. And hearing the Dr. Jeff's story and, and hearing his heart and the intention behind creating Rhythmia it's a really beautiful thing, man. And, and for somebody like me, like I, I just, I never had the call and couldn't picture myself going into the jungle in a maloka and like puking and sweating it out in, in the mud. I just couldn't do it. But this is not that this is like a five-star resort with saltwater pools and gyms and delicious meals and, and also beautiful plant medicine ceremonies. And a structured kind of uh, program that they've put together, like Mel said, um, over the years that they've been doing it, when they found out from the people that have gone there what works and what doesn't. So if you go down there with your intention and you do the program, you, you're going to get some transformation yeah. from going to Rhythmia. So I'm super excited for all of you to hear Dr. Jeff because he made all of us believers, and I know that... Uh, a lot of you are going to be signing up and heading down to Costa Rica after this. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, this is one of those episodes, too. I know you've heard us say this plenty of times. Um, it doesn't happen every single time, but plenty of times we get on and like the energy of the room will change. Oh, yeah. And we just feel like instead of the three of us, there's that fourth person in mm-hmm. the room. And it really felt like uh, Dr. McNary was in the room with us and almost like reassuring us like like if we were all like in the room like you know doing our um our intake form with him or something you know and then he was like making us feel comfortable and answering our questions Mm -hmm. and but it was so sincere and I just really appreciate the work that he's doing for people and humanity. Um, hum- well, yeah, humanity. And that, all of us. That's one of the things that they get to in here. Like if you're thinking like I kind of did it for it. Well, well, this is bougie and expensive. Well, they have scholarship programs. There's all kinds of ways to do this. Yep. If you can't afford it. They're, yeah, if you're serious about it. They're seriously there to help people. And what the, for me, like in, in talking to Dr. Jeff, the bottom line for me was to see his eyes and his face and he looks so happy first of all and second of all there's a shine behind that guy's eyes that mm-hmm. you can't you that you can't fake that Mm-mm. that's a real there's light in there and you can see it so yeah we're going to so, so do you think that based on this um interview or conversation you would wanted to try it I'm, yes 110 percent apple say 110 yeah. i, I was skeptical well not skeptical like aaron said I, I didn't hear the calling yeah of ayahuasca like you said like going to the jungle like we know people we all do that have gone and done these and it's like yeah i got a mosquito I bite of fair almost yeah died. yeah i don't know if i want to go out in the middle of a jungle <laughs> and say but yes i do yes i do what about you aaron i'm i'm uh I, i'm 50 50 still if if and when on I, the fence. if and when I go do it, it will be at Rhythmia. I'll say that. Okay, how That's about you? Fair. Oh, I after speaking with him, I, I've never had any trepidation about the medicine, but I also didn't feel like called. Like That's I know, where I'm at. I'm, I know that the the medicine works. I'm I'm same. sure of like it's um strength and transforming your life and and healing and all of that. But I don't know that I was like needing or feeling so drawn to do that specific right. medicine. But after speaking with him, it's like when things fall into our lap, then I feel like it's co- talking to us. It's and come so to us. Exactly. Yes. So it literally came to our like mailbox. It, well, it, it came like, to our studio. Well, what I'm, I'm saying, you know yeah. what I mean? Like email, like it came to yeah. us and yeah. was like, do this. Right. And like, 
you know, hot dogs didn't do that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, no, or, no. Or, well, I, don't know, Oscar, I don't know hot dogs PR. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar Mayer didn't show but, up. But my point is, is that when something's <laughs> grabbing our attention, you notice it. So oh, yes, I good. feel as if, especially after Kate's reading, um, there's something that's between the three of us. So us doing this ayahuasca ceremony together would be really special, I think, and very, well, very telling. Of, all right. of, and also just to add to that, the other, because there's opportunities to do it here in the States. It's yeah, become of very, you know, it's everywhere, but that didn't call something like this from reading and hearing stories about ayahuasca. This sounds like they're like, like, it's a journey so therefore i feel i need to journey yes. like going out of the country yeah, be serious costa about rica it. is not that far it's not you know what i mean like it's a beautiful setting and it's a week long they kind of you kind of you'll hear you kind of yeah, slowly the, it, it, it it just the way they lay it out this seems like the approach that's like for me okay yeah, right. I, I'm totally on board. Well, You're let's on. see what all of you think after this. I, I think that we'll have a lot of more on board folks after this conversation. Let's do the business and get them to it. All right. Okay, let's do Follow it. Follow No Simple Road at No Simple Road on the social media places that you go do social media stuff. Get our merch. Yeah, go to our website, man. www.nosimpleroad.com. Dot com. You can get a tarot reading by Melanie. And man. you can uh, get merch. You can find out about other psychedelic uh, healing modalities yeah. there. Um, there's a calendar of events where you can find out where we're going to be. Come hang out with us. Come cut what a rug with to. the No Simple Road family at a show. Uh, go to patreon.com forward slash No Simple Road. That is how you can financially support us, how we can keep going every month. We actually just had a little quick business meeting and went over our finances and yeah yeah so we we need you to sign up actually no Let's, simple road costs a dollar a month well i was just gonna but also it, hang on okay. it costs a dollar a month but it's on the honor system nobody's checking so if you're listening I mean, you, that's the whole thing it's on honor system <laughs> patreon.com i Mom. was i was just gonna thank the people who have signed up since the honor system and before the honor system. I just wanted to take a special few seconds to say thank you to each and every one of our Patreon peeps. Thank you. We love doing it with you. On top of getting <laughs> eight episodes a month, because I know you're saying, what do I get if I sign up? Yeah. On top of getting the eight episodes a month, you get all the Friday episodes ad-free and a day early-ish. A day early. I say a day. I try and get them out Our as sporad- soon as I can. At yeah. least my sporadic participation. <laughs> <Yep>. in <laughs> Apple's on there doing stuff. We got Connor, our No Simple Road Grateful Dead archivist, throwing up Connor's picks there. Andrew is throwing his filet mignon cuts <laughs> up on there. Dang. Uh, the deep cuts from all around the jam world. So there, there's some cool stuff happening over at Patreon, the No Simple Road world. So go check it out and, and the honor system. The honor system. <laughs> the honor system. Boom. You can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, and I think we have a new review. Yeah, new we review. do. And this is, this is really the way to do it. This is super cool. Uh, this is from Adam L182. May the fourth be with you. He sent this on right Saturday. On, uh, five stars. I don't have an Apple account, but I borrowed a phone just to let everyone know <gasps> how awesome this podcast is. Aaron, Apple, and Mel are the kindest people out there. And their love and support for our scene is limitless. Always giving it 110%. <laughs> and always will be as much, much as they can. Oh, shit. Love from Adam. Callie slash St. Louis. So Dang. just from the review, we know. I, we know that Homie is an OG No Simple uh-huh. Road listener. Well, and Adam just wrote in the other day well, yeah yeah. Yes. yeah yeah right on adam thank you for doing that man and borrowing yes. a phone and going or not wrote there. in but yeah called in and the may may the fourth be with you all year long yeah. adam Dang. Uh, the fourth adam, is strong with that one as much as you can be uh you know <laughs> leaving a review it's not just an ego thing it, it's actually it helps other people find out about the show it makes the algorithm spit our logo out into other people's feeds when they go on their podcast app. So that's why we ask you to do that. And we appreciate it. Thank you for doing that for us, Adam. That was super rad. Uh, You know what? You can call 971-808-1524. That's the No Simple Road Tepid line. And last but not least, 
No calls? Tell somebody you Tell love somebody about you love. Simple Road. That is how we spread the heart-connected mycelial network that is the No Simple Road family and how we connect with each other and every it all grows and, and then mushrooms happen and, you know, spores. and yeah. you, you know how it works, man. I don't know Fuzzy guys. bunnies. Mm-hmm. There's Puppies. an episode for corn. everyone. That's true. Puppy Any- breath. <laughs> Wow, Apple. Smell right. of a fresh baby. And <laughs> no, here we go. Anything. Without further ado, the No Simple Road Crew gives you Dr. Dr. Jeff McNary. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Jeff. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. I've been I watched your guys' website and I checked out everything and I'm I'm stoked. We did the same that. thing. <laughs> we totally did the same thing. <laughs> I even looked up the lyrics to I, I need a miracle because um, that's what we talk about at Rhythmia. We talk about getting a miracle. You know? yeah, well, right. appropriate. Yeah. I love that. We can after after you introduce yourself, I want to hear about the miracle. Let's start with that after after. But cool. for everybody listening, let's hear who Dr. Jeff Jeff is. So I'm the I'm the chief medical officer at Rhythmia. I have a, a doctorate degree in psychology. Um, I'm from Los Angeles. I went to UCLA and got a master's in public health. And I managed a bunch of healthcare facilities in California for a long time in LA. Ran um, a rehab called Passages Malibu. I was the director for eight years. Got fed up with uh, the Western model and discovered plant medicine and then opened up a place down here in Costa Rica with a medical license um, to do ayahuasca in a safe legal way. So that's, that's when I've been here 10 years. Do you mind just going back a little bit? You said you got fed up with the medical model and found out about about psychedelics or Western. Sorry. Um, Was that hand in hand? Did you find out about psychedelics and get fed up with it? Or were you like looking for something else or like, how did that transition happen? Well, when I was at UCLA, um, I was applying to medical school after I got my my public health degree, and I was managing OBGYN clinics mm-hmm. as uh, like an administrator. And what I saw is that a lot of the women patients that were coming in had trauma, mm-hmm. and it wasn't being addressed. Um, it was just kind of brushed under the rug and just minimized, and maybe give them some meds, and that was kind of it. That maybe see a therapist. It just I, I was starting to see at a young age. I was in my mid twenties that. Um, the symptomology approach for healthcare wasn't something that was really connecting with me. So I was kind of already hesitant Mm -hmm. about a lot of the healthcare Mm -hmm. stuff. So then um, I got into medical school at UCLA, but I decided not to go ultimately because I didn't want to be controlled and trapped basically, because that's what I was seeing in the physicians I was working with. And uh, I moved to Hawaii. My wife was from Maui. And I worked for the Department of Health and I saw that there's a different way to do things that can be more cultural based because I was working with Mm -hmm. Native Hawaiian families. So I saw that the tools I was given in public health weren't resonating with any of the locals. Um, You know, like, for example, you know, group therapy is something that you're supposed to be doing. But nobody in Hawaii wants to talk about their problems to to strangers. It's like it's more family based. And so there's just these a lot of these things that I was noticing that weren't working. So I dove into some research and found that um, empowerment, um, self-esteem, and, and sort of like sovereignty of the mind are things that help you improve all your health behaviors kind of like as an, as an indirect effect and a direct effect. So I started doing that with my clients and it was really cool. Like we would do cultural activities and it would help them ground and become empowered and, they, and, their, and all their behaviors improved. So it was really nice. So I said... I want to get a doctorate in psychology. So then I went and got a doctorate in psychology. And then I'm like, man, I'm still just get, given all these tools that are just not working. Like they're just kind of, you know, if somebody, if somebody is suicidal or really depressed or has a really bad addiction, you know, the, the model is really good at stabilizing those people and keeping them from, you know, kind of just getting them at a baseline. Right. And then that's kind of where it ends, you know? And I was, I was seeing my patients like in my private practice in California and in LA just for years coming to me with the same stuff. I'm like, I don't know what to do. So I, I was getting frustrated at that level too. And yeah. then, um, that that's where I was. So I was kind of already sort of not feeling it, right. you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you were feeling, not feeling it even before you got your psychology degree, like you saw yeah. it off the bat for what it was, but you still, con- you still wanted to be in that field. How many out there know what a lot frog is? 
Do you know what one is, Apple? I don't. What is a lot frog? I don't know. Do you know what one is, Mel? I don't. Okay, here's, so here's here's the thing. <clears throat> Go over to our new sponsor, longstrangeput.co, and check it out. You there's a there's a, a an item on their store that's a lot frog, and I need you to go over there, find it, and see what I'm talking about. Long Strange Putt is the online lot purveyor of everything amazing. Stickers, shirts, golf club covers. Um, festival wear. Festival wear. Tow- towels for golfing. Uh, MF Doom divot fixers. Corduroy hats. Mystery boxes. Mi- <laughs> stickers. All this kinds of fun stuff. head bucket hats. Oh, yeah. My favorite. I want you to picture Shakedown Street at, a, at Dick's and then go to longstrangeputt.co and you're going to be like, oh, I'm right at home. Yep. You're going to know exactly what we're talking about. And they're hooking up the No Simple Road family. Yes, what? they are. 20% off on all orders of $50 or more. So here's the thing. Festival season starting. There's going to be outdoor shows. You need a new hat. New you need fanny new, pack. Need a new t-shirt. That's maybe. right. And and you go over to longstrangeputt.co and you hook yourself up. And I found two. I want the shirt. I want the tripping tree. You do? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Instead of the giving tree. It's like Shel Silverstein's. Aaron's got that. I have it. It's hanging yeah. in my closet. Do you? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was a customer of Long Strange Putt long before they were a sponsor of the show, sir. <laughs> 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 Go over and check it out, everybody. It is a blast. And if you happen to be a head that golfs, you are in business. So go check them out. Longstrangeputt.co. Yeah. So I, I saw a lecture by Ice T, of all people, at, yeah. when I was in college. And Ice T said, to us young undergrads, he said, use the opportunities you get in college and in business to get into these positions of authority and empowerment and make a change and go off like a time bomb inside wow. these organizations. Right. So that stuck with me and was kind of my motto. So I thought, you know, I'm going to get a doctorate. I'm going to move into these high level, whatever that leads to. And then I'm going to actually try to make a change. So when I was getting my doctorate in psych, I was, I was looking more administratively to like run facilities as opposed to do patient care. Now I had to do patient care to get my, my postdoc hours, but that wasn't my goal. My goal was to like run facilities, you know? Right on. I mean that, so, so this is kind of like a dream come true for you to be able to actively help somebody and not actually help. Yeah. And not keep them at like a a baseline, which is kind of the saddest and worst thing that you could do for somebody. Like you said, that's like trauma, suicidal, having these issues. If they're at a baseline, that's their baseline. Do you know what I mean? Like there, it seems as if all that hard work has paid off into this miracle situation. So Let's hear about yes. these miracles. Yeah. So you know, Jerry is a, um, Jerry Powell is the CEO of Rhythmia, and he was one of my patients at the rehab in LA. And him and I hit it off. Shit. And I worked with him for about five years. And he was still having all these issues post re, post recovery. You know, he he was funny because he had like multiple substance abuse issues. But in his mind, he only went to rehab for Demerol. He didn't go for cocaine or alcohol or anything. <laughs> no problem there. Got it. I don't have a problem with yeah. those things. Just the, just the Demerol. Totally. So, so he was actually successful in stopping Demerol, but he still, <laughs> he still continued with all the other behaviors, you know? And so I worked with him for five years. I was like, man, you know, I don't know what to do, dude. You're getting suicidal again. You're, you're miserable. He, and he was this he had retired early. He was a super successful business guy. And, and he heard about some plant medicine in Costa Rica and uh, he just went on a whim. And I was kind of like, you know, I didn't know a lot about it at all. I didn't even really know what he was doing. I just figured I've tried everything. So why don't you go do it? And, and he, he went down to Costa Rica and did it and it completely flipped him. And I was really hesitant to believe it because I had never seen something like that happen in a week. Right. And I went down the next like two weeks later with him and did it and he tried it. And I was like, Whoa, this is, this is what I've been looking for. Wow. And through various plant medicine ceremonies, um, we've had intentions about, you know, what do we do with this information? Like, do we open a place that's safe? Do we, op- do we stay in Costa Rica? Like, what do we do? And all of our business decisions have come through sort of like these downloads, um, through medicine. And one of the things was about, um, your miracle, we call it getting your miracle. And it's about realizing three intentions. Um, show me who I've become, merge me back with my soul at all costs 
and heal my heart. So those three intentions are what we teach the guests. And those came through to us on plant medicine, kind of like as goals to work on. And we teach that to the guests when they come here. But that, that was kind of the first thing that happened to Jerry is that he saw that he'd become this completely miserable person, this, this crook, this bad guy in his mind. And then he merged back with his true self. He healed, did inner child work on the medicine, healed himself, and then got a new heart. And meaning that he, you know, he, he turned over a new leaf and he healed the pain that he had from his childhood, which is really brutal. You know, so that's kind of what the miracle thing wow. is for us. I, wow. how, how, how long ago was it that you went down there and tried the plant medicine for the first time? It was in July of 2014. Wow. Okay. Wow. wow. So it's been... It's been decade, fast, decade almost. It's been but, fast, but that's yeah, fast. Ten years is not yeah. not a long, no, not right. a road. No. Well, Sorry and for the... and um, how old is Rhythmia? We've been open for eight years. Wow. So yeah, we've seen sixteen thousand guests through here. So holy it's, smokes! It's been, yeah, we see we can max out at a hundred a week. We have a very big facility here, but right now, for example, we have forty people here like this week, you know, so it averages between 70 and 50. And then sometimes we'll get a hundred if there's like a really good guest speaker that everybody likes. So we have guest speakers come. It's 2024 and there's things you can do now that you couldn't do then. And one of those cool things is go to Instagram and check out our sponsor at melt mushrooms, M E L T M U S H R O O M S. They have the best mushroom chocolate in the business. And over there, as they say, you can taste the rainbow. They have horchata, peanut butter, coffee crunch, pretzel, mint, pistachio, matcha, milk, milk chocolate, and quinoa. Yeah, apple <laughs> cider oh, rice. Let's hear it for crunch. apple, everybody. No, you know what, man? The, four grams of their sacred mushroom blend in every bar, adaptogens, other amazing vegan options, all kinds of stuff. All to improve your mood, focus, memory, helps with depression, even sometimes anxiety. Or if you just want to have fun at a show. Absolutely. And they have minis, they have singles, they have capsules, and they have gummies, they and the they're gum. shipping right to you. So here's what you're going to do. Go follow at Melt Mushrooms on Instagram. Shoot them a DM. Say, hey man, No Simple Road sent me over here. I want my 20% discount for the month of what month is it? May. 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 For the month of May. And, and they're going to be like, here's the menu. And then you do the order and they send it to you. And it's as simple as that. So go follow at Melt Mushrooms on Instagram. Get your, get your stuff together, man. Get your head right. You know, the, wow. we've, we've gotten um, a few centers have reached out to us to be on the show. You're actually the first that we, that we vibed with. Mm -hmm. um, uh, cool. That's, the, awesome. That's a big compliment. Thank you. Well, thank you. Well, I mean, uh, well, who are we? But uh, the thing is, is that um, I think from our experience, we we none of us have done ayahuasca, um, but we have um, all collectively done psychedelics, and we we know that that space is very special and delicate, and yeah. our thing is always like the capitalist side of the you know helping people. You know, yes. like we understand everyone needs to make money. Who doesn't? How can you live Correct. without money? There's nobody that can do that. So, That's so that sure. money's always going to be somewhere in it. But then when you talk about people's souls and their traumas and their emotions, these are things that are intangible and yeah. to have authority over that or any type of, like you mentioned the word sovereignty over that, that's a very scary kind of delicate space to be in. And if it seems, you know, and from, from our end, if it seems too commercial or too, uh, I don't know what the word would be commodified. It, that's yeah. not attractive to us. We're, we're not the only game podcast in town. You can go to any other podcast and talk about it, but if we're not feeling it, uh, the, yeah. the three of us together, then I just, I don't want to put that out well, there. The, they can find out about it in some other way, which is great and yeah. fine. And it may be great. And we just don't know, but like, it's not for sure. us, but we want to have some mm -hmm. type of connection and some type of like, um, you know, let's see what this is about. Let, let's see if we want to even know what this is about, because again, that yeah. space is sensitive, man. And people it can is. be really pulled by the nose in a sense. 100%, and, 100%. and I'm not down with that. I don't want to be pulled by my nose. If I'm coming to someone for help, 
I'm asking for help for that thing, not for right. for it to be steered into some weird direction. I think all three of us have totally. had experience with cultish kind of weird <laughs> stuff. Yeah. So yeah. we know, yeah. Yeah. you know no. what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> me like, oh this seems cool and then weird yeah. stuff starts but happening Jeff, the, the the thing yeah. the thing that really struck me about rhythmia um other places that i've seen um it, the facility itself d- didn't didn't seem inviting and i know that uh plant medicine i've done other plant medicines can be very uncomfortable so to be somewhere mm-hmm. uncomfortable while being uncomfortable doesn't yeah. sound healing to me <laughs> at all. It just yeah, sounds I'm like a, <laughs> tra- <laughs> pardon my language. It sounds like a fucking nightmare. Yeah, that's traumatizing. And so, so yes. the thing with Rhythmia that that struck me was how beautifully intentional all of what you've put together is, and um, how how nice the spot is. Can you talk to me a, a little bit about? the intention behind that and, and the thoughts behind putting the grounds and everything together. Definitely. So um, I'm glad that you noticed that because that's a big part of what we do here. We, we know that everyone coming to Rhythmia has some serious things they're working on. You know, like you had mentioned the trauma, there's an addiction history for some people. Um, you know, there's a lot of depression, anxiety, lots of things. We have a lot of veterans in the military and in order, you know, all of those people, in their life are very guarded and they, and they don't trust much and I don't blame them, you know, cause yeah. they've been disappointed in, in a scary way, abused, ab- abandoned, neglected. And, um, if, if someone comes to, uh, participate in plant medicine somewhere and they don't feel safe and they don't feel protected and that there isn't the support there, they're not going to open up and be vulnerable in the ways that are required to get that healing that they need. Yeah. And so we understand that. And because we, you know, when Jerry and I first drank plant medicine, we were at a very shady, um, very sketchy place. And and the whole time, you know, I'm looking around like, what's who's going to sneak up on me? I, I kept I kept thinking, you know, and I <laughs> I didn't get to like really dive in deeply as soon as I maybe should have. And so I was guarded for a lot of it. So um, we have a very high ratio of staff to guests. We have medical doctors. We have four medical doctors, 12 nurses, two paramedics. They're actually quite bored because this medicine is very safe, right. um, especially right. because we clear everybody medically prior to coming here. Yeah. And the, the rooms are beautiful. There's AC. The food is amazing. There's a, a really nice spa. There's body work. There's hot, cold plunge saunas, et cetera. So it's like, it's like going on a really nice vacation, you know, but, but, the, but it's not a vacation because there's deep work happening. So you're kind of like in this resort environment, but then at night you're, you're going into the Maloka and having a really amazing experience. So there's a, we have an urgent care on the property, you know, if people need an IV or they're a little bit overwhelmed to get scared. Cause these, these are all first time drinkers, you know, of ayahuasca. Oh. We, we have a very small percentage have done this before. So we're, we're, we cater to the first time people. Got That's right. a big part okay. of what we're doing. Yeah. So how uh, so, is, is cool. the way that you're um, eight years now, the way that you're getting the word out is word of mouth or how in the past have you, you know, let people know that this is available? So we used to have, um, I don't like this word, but I'll use it because it makes sense to people. Like we used to have thought leaders. Okay. (laughs) That's what I was talking about earlier. (laughs) Uh (laughs) What does that even mean? Right. I don't even have a thought leader. Okay. I I still don't even understand what that means, but, but we had, we had people that, um, lecture out in the world and have like, uh, people that like, like a Joe Dispenza, I think is like a thought leader guy. Right. So. He teaches meditation and things like that. Now he hasn't come to Rhythmia. All of his people have, but he hasn't. But people like that, like Michael Beckwith from Agape, or um, Bruce Lipton, or Graham Hancock, yeah. or um, you know people like that. Like um, uh, I could go on and on, but you know a lot of uh, we had um, Yanla Van Sant, who's like this really interesting lady, and so all these cool people. Martin Luther King the third came and he he taught. So. Um, when the way we did marketing at the beginning was we would invite them and then they would tell their following and then they would book. And then, it, then from there it kind of so spread smart. word of mouth and then it kind of just took off. And so now we're not doing a whole lot of marketing. I mean, we're doing some, yeah. but it's more about like, 
interviews on podcasts and we have a social media presence, but it's not like huge marketing spends, you know, it's mostly word of mouth. Now I learned, uh, I learned about Rhythmia long before I ever heard from, from Abby, um, through Instagram and seeing, yeah. um, some people's stuff there. And also YouTube of seeing a few people's experience yeah. there. And it was the first time, honestly, that I thought to myself, okay, I, I could do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That doesn't look like what I was talking about earlier. That actually looks doable. So uh, yeah. what yeah. I wonder and, from your part, you said that you, and the first time you did it, you were in a kind of like sketchy, um, let's just say, you know, very authentic <laughs> um, yeah. way of doing it, but you went back, you went, you, yeah. you went multiple times. Yeah. What was it that was calling you back personally? I think um, once because people always ask me like, well, how many plant medicine ceremonies have you had? And I've had like hundreds, but the, the, the real impactful ones were the first like seven. And what, what led me to those first few journeys was my own, my own work from growing up in LA in a, in a very violent neighborhood in East Los Angeles and just kind of the culture of my neighborhood and things that I went through. That was a big part of like my trauma and working on that. And I saw that there was light at the end of the tunnel because of what Jerry had gone through and seen himself for him. And he had shifted and I, I would, didn't even think I needed any work, you know, but I, but I very much did a lot. I was very guarded. I just wasn't really aware of it. So it was the self-discovery aspect that was blocked, that it was intriguing because when I was in school for my doctorate, I had to receive 65 hours of individual therapy for myself before graduating. Mm -hmm. So you would think that all these new psychologists are pretty self-aware, but we're just not because we're kind of just going through the motions with that therapy. Right. And I was too. I just was kind of like, this is a requirement of school, whatever. I'm checking the box. I'm going, but I didn't really do deep work. And so when I, when I drank plant medicine and participated, that's where the work happened. So I was intrigued by it. And that, that's kind of what kept, kept me coming back. So for the folks that come through Rhythmia that have, you know, their trauma healed or start the journey to, to healing in themselves. What kind of support is available to them after they leave Rhythmia? Because I, I know that for myself, those months after a big psychedelic journey and those downloads are the most critical to integrate what I just got. So, or, yes. and it's, or is it even needed too? you know, cause we've, like we said, none of us have done ayahuasca. So maybe mm -hmm. it's a little bit different from other plant medicines in that way. Well, we, um, you know, everyone's different as you know, mm -hmm. and some people need a lot of support post, um, ayahuasca sessions and some are kind of okay. And they kind of already have a network that's healthy for them. We have a, we have an app that we give everybody. It's part of the program it's included. And that app lasts for three months afterwards that includes it's three months worth of content. So there's weekly content for three months that helps them kind of transition and integrate. So there's, there's breath work sessions that they can do with online and there's um, meditation guided meditations. There's also individual therapy and group counseling that's go. available right. on the app. And so they have, we have all these counselors that they can, that they've met here that are on the app and they can just, click and make an appointment with them. And so I'm on there, for example, and some of our other staff and, they, and I, and I have sessions all the time. Like, you know, people that have been here a month ago, I have sessions with them on zoom and what's, how are you doing? What's happening? You know, and when they're here, I teach a class on near the end of the week that helps them um, develop a practice for themselves when they get home for integration. So we know that, that aftercare is a huge deal. Um, when I was in the rehab world, it was everything for sobriety people had to do aftercare or else they were almost guaranteed to relapse. So it's a big, they say that, you know, the data shows that three years of aftercare post treatment are like ideal. And that's most people don't ever do that. But, but the more you can get as months going on and on and on for at least up to three years, the better that the, it will stick and you can be on your path. Right. I, I, uh, 27 years ago, I was a heroin. No, addict. I was a heroin well, yeah. addict for for years and went through rehab in California actually, and mm -hmm. a couple of times, and um, yeah, it there was no aftercare after that, and it never stuck. Yeah, and it, it, yeah. I I personally, I psychedelics were the thing that healed me. 
Well, and, and that's amazing. having a son. Yeah. And having a family that, that too. That yeah. Does, that does it. Those are that, great. Wake you Those up. are great things. <laughs> yeah. And NA, you know, NA, NA stuff too can be triggering for some people like NA meetings. It was difficult for me, man. For, well, You know, this, yeah. I want to talk about that because, you know, NA is kind of like the gold standard for mm-hmm. anybody coming out of recovery. And Mm -hmm. I, you know, after going a few bouts with him of relapsing and not and whatever, going to meetings Uh, with him and blah, 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 you know, one day, one day he came to me and was like, look, Mel, I know that you don't trust me, but I can't do those meetings. I know that it works for some people, but it does not work for me. I don't belong there and I don't feel like those are my people. I don't feel like I need that. And like that was the first time that my lying addict husband was telling me the truth. You know what I mean? Like I felt it, you know, you know, the truth when somebody's telling you the truth, you know, when they're bullshitting you. And it was the very first time. And I had gone, if I wouldn't have gone to those meetings, I would have been like, Nope, sorry. You gotta, you gotta go. If you want to be with me, you gotta go. But I went to those meetings and Mm -hmm. I was like, it keeps you in this and maybe that was just a few meetings that I had want, went to. I'm not going to say a, across the board yeah. because NA and sure. AA help for people. And I know that they sure. do and it's great. But like, I, I saw what he was talking about. It was a constant yeah. keeping, it was a disempowerment. Well, That's from, what I felt from, when I, when I saw it, yeah. when I was there. For me, it was a, yeah. a constant affirmation of sickness. Yeah. That's what I'm it, saying. It was like never allowing me to be, to be well. And yeah. once I, once I stepped out of that, I, I took responsibility for myself. And, and, you know, I think that for a lot of people that are hurting and have trauma, um, we don't know how to do that on our own from the get go. It's, it's, there's, there's a lot of triggers in there when it comes to that. And so yes. finally making the decision to do something like plant medicine is is really terrifying. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, and I think, yes. um, for a lot of us, it's, um, maybe a last ditch try, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Do you see a lot of that oh, coming yeah. through with me? Tons of that all the time. Yes. And you know, when, when, when I was at passages, we were a non, we were the first mainstream non 12 step rehab. Oh, and so wow. I caught a lot of flack, um, for that in the 12 step community. It was funny. Like I used to go to my friend's meetings for, they would get a a cake or something or get a chip and I would go. And then so that would be in Venice beach. Right. And somebody see that's a guy from passages and then they get all pissed (laughs) off. They chase me out of there. You know, (laughs) it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I'm running down Lincoln Boulevard for my life, you know, in Venice, you can imagine rough crowd. I grew up down there too, man. So I know, yeah, you know, you know how that is. So, you know, the the thing about the 12 step too, and as you mentioned, this stuff is like, you know, the, the whole model is based on obviously the the strength of it is that it's a lay community. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're rather, um, you know, fellowship is is a big thing. Um, because the, the lay community doesn't know how to work on trauma and they don't try to, it's almost like, you know, that's why step three is always so hard for people because it just, it brings up the traumatic past and right. the, the making amends part. And that's, that's really hard. That's where most people relapse or, or quit. Right. So um, I think that the 12 step thing has its, has its place for some people, like we we're saying, yeah. but, but to really get the healing, you have to dig down and resolve that unresolved trauma and, and that emotion that, it, that was present, you know, that caused the pain. And when there's using my, my supervisor, Dr. Car- Dr. Bobby Carlson, amazing psychologist, famous lady, God rest her soul. She was my postdoc advisor, a beautiful person. She said, addiction is stems from trauma or trauma stems from addiction. <laughs> They're very much related. So, <laughs> yeah, I, so, you They're hand really, in hand, no matter really what. Without the other for sure. Yeah. Exactly. So what's beautiful about plant medicine, whether it's psilocybin, uh, iboga, ayahuasca, all these different ones, um, is that it, it allows, it goes in to the brain it, and it, through epigenetics, it adjusts the sigma one receptors on the, on the endoplasmic reticulum of the cytoplasm cells of the neurons. And then it releases these memories and these emotions that we've been holding onto in our amygdala. And that's where they come forward 
and then you can reprocess them in a, in a healthy way, in a safe way, not when you're experiencing the, the event of the trauma and, and then you can let it go. And that's where the real healing is. And so there's no more like white knuckling after that. Right. It's, it's just, you're at peace and you're not always an addict as the 12 step will say, like once an addict, always an addict. I don't believe in that. I never did. Um, I don't like that identity. It's negative. So mm-hmm. I think that's, I think we're all on the same page with yeah, that man. one. Yeah. yeah. 100%. Oh, you, yeah. That, what you just said that, about the amygdala, the, that's the lizard brain, right? That's our, that's where yeah. our, our fight or flight is. And mm-hmm. if, if that's where we're storing our trauma, getting inside that thing on our own seems really tough because the sense, second you touch it, it triggers the fight or flight whether that's emotionally, physically, spiritually, whatever. So it seems like what this medicine would do would create a bridge kind of yes, in a way. Yeah. The only kind of therapeutic intervention I've ever seen (laughs) that's talk therapy based that even touched it a little bit was hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about hypnotism. I'm talking about like hypnotherapy, like a doctor level person that got that got a fellowship in this. And so it's more trained, more advanced. That's the only thing I saw that kind of could access it sort of, but, um, but that bridge is very strongly occurring because the Sigmar one receptors are involved in synaptic plasticity. Mm -hmm. So that's where it allows the new neuron connections to happen. And that's why you can go deep into your subconscious with this. So it's, that's why this is so great for trauma. In my opinion, it's amazing for it. I heard you talk. One of the things I love that you do too, is where you talk about uh, PTS instead of PTSD. Because that is an annoying term, the the, the disorder. And that's been around forever and usually associated with soldiers. People have seen war and I've had it upset me in the past with people that yeah. say they have PTSD and it's like not from, you know, going to war or something. PTS is much nicer term for it. Much nicer. I love it. I, I drop the D down here all the time and people are like really like it when they hear that. They go, oh, yeah, it makes sense. You know, it's not a disorder. It's a condition and yeah. it's something you can heal. You can get past it. It also empowers the veterans. Cause you know, they've been told all kinds of crazy things, you know, in their post, you know, war stuff and they're, you know, they're hurting big time. And if all of a sudden they think, well, I, what I get from going to war, I got a disorder now. I mean, it's just, it's just so not okay. You know? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's like stacking something else on them. Yeah. I, I'm, yeah. Cur- I'm curious too about something down there. I, I mean, obviously the plant medicine is uh, approved and legal down there with government and everything. Yeah. I'm just curious of like how, how they and the community around you in Costa Rica views the clinic. And also, do you get many people like locals from Costa Rica that ever seek treatment? Yeah, we do. Um, at first we didn't cause it was sort of a, a new sort of thing to everybody around here. But once we um, kind of established ourselves and obviously we have all Costa Rican staff that work here, mm-hmm. um, word spread and we do get quite a few people from Costa Rica. And we also, um, mentioning kind of the corporate thing earlier, we, our goal as a company is to have 25% of our population of guests be scholarship based. So every week we have a very high number of people that don't, that don't pay that we've, that we've scholarshiped that, you know, they have to fill out a form and you know, their reasons why. And so it's like they can win a trip, you know? And so we, that's very important. And a lot of the Costa Ricans are in that program, not all of them, but some are in that. And we gift a lot of a lot of trips to people that are local because um, the government here is very supportive of what we're doing. And the reason is because we have a medical license. Yeah. So um, we, we went about it the right way there. You know, Costa Rica is an interesting country because, you know, it's not Peru. It's not Brazil. It's not, you know, it's not the Amazon. Those are countries that, you know, those are places that, okay, ayahuasca is kind of part of the culture. But in Costa Rica, this is ecotourism central. Right. You know, they okay. love ecotourism and yeah. it's very much like that here. So the, the identity of Costa Rica to the board of tourism and everybody isn't necessarily like, this is a plant medicine haven. Um, it's yeah. sort of become that a bit, but um, the, the reason why the government's on board with us is because we're highly regulated and we're complying and we're working collaboratively with them. So they're, they're big fans of us. Hmm. What about the, the shamans themselves um, in Costa Rica that maybe were there before you or, or there beside yeah. you, how is that um, relationship? 
Yeah. So um, a big part of why ayahuasca is legal in Costa Rica is because there are indigenous tribes in Costa Rica that have used it for, you know, thousands of years. And um, the, the shamans that we have are, most of them are from either Costa Rica or Venezuela. And we have a few that are from Colombia. Okay. And so um, they're, they're all trained with um, this guy named Taita Juanito Chindoy. And he's a Taita from the Amazon basin um, that comes himself here once in a while and trains everybody. He serves medicine here too. And, and uh, it's been really cool experience. You know, it was funny at first because like I'm used to managing doctors and nurses and psychologists. All of a sudden I got to manage shamans. It's just like, that's awesome. It was super cool, but hard. Like, I, you know, they're on, they're on a different, like, uh, you know, time scale. It's like, they have meetings at nine. It's like, well, uh, where are you? Well, I'm, I'm talking to somebody. It's like, dude, like they're, they're not totally watching. They're not like, looking at their watch. I was having a meeting with the Jaguar. I'm, I'm, curious, even have one. I'm <laughs> curious with that. I mean, cause like once you try plant medicine, kind of like, I mean, like what I can relate it to is like doing, you know, psilocybin, things like that. Yeah. You do it and then you get the calling from it again. You know, it may be a week or a month or months or a year later with like yeah. all these shaman, I would imagine like, once you've done it, it's like, I want to go on his tour because the, the, they all handle it yeah. in a different way. And does it provide yeah. a different experience with each shaman? Well, it does. It does. It definitely does. And, and, you know, it's interesting about the ayahuasca in particular because the shamans make the ayahuasca based on their tribal recipe. And so mm. all these ayahuascas have um, the vine in common, the ayahuasca vine, which is the monoamine oxidase inhibitor. And that is important because it turns off the stomach enzymes in the, so the DMT can get absorbed. And so the DMT plant, that's what's regional based on where the shamans live. So in some countries, it's mimosa tenia flora and others it's chacruna. And there's all these different DMT plants. And so that's what kind of like gives it its flavor and its sort of uniqueness to each shaman is the way that the, that the DMT is interacting, the concentration DMT, and also just the cultural ikaros and the songs and the chants that they're singing it all kind of like has different intentions. So what we've done through our data collection of the guest experience is we have Monday is a, we call it a gentle introduction and it's a very mild. Um, so it's the guests would probably punch me in the face if they heard me say it's mild. <laughs> <laughs> How dare it's you, really sir. Mild. <laughs> How dare you, but it's mild <laughs> for the beginning. It's, of the mild. Week. It's, it's yeah. We don't want to scare anybody and have people leave day one. So, so it kind of like intros them in, gets the medicine used to them, then used to the medicine. And then Tuesday night is a, is a very emotionally deep going, we call it going deeper and it, you get to really dig into the amygdala and kind of, what are you here for? Let's get it sorted out. Then Wednesday is a very strong feminine energy night and the medicine matches that. We have our female shamans running the, running the night and all the female staff are up there working. And that's a beautiful night of healing. That's like my favorite night. And then Thursday is the Yahe night and that's the traditional Colombian ayahuasca. And all the shamans had a vote and they all said, Yahe is the oldest ayahuasca. I mean, I don't, I'm kidding, but that's, that's kind of what they say is that Yahe from the, at this certain part of the Amazon basin is like the original blend. And so we serve that on Thursday night, kind of like as the final ceremony, you know, and that goes until early morning around eight or nine in the morning. And the other ones ended around one or two in the, in the morning. So there's, there's a different vibe to each night, but there's intentions behind it all. And so every day we're teaching the guests how to use the process to their benefit. So this is like wow. a hybrid of, you know, ayahuasca ceremonies. Cause like, if you go, um, I'm, I, I don't know, but when you first went and when people go, it's not usually a week long, right? It's, it's a, maybe Correct. a day or two days, you know, maybe a, yeah. a, a long weekend, but not necessarily a week. Yeah. So you're, you're creating something that's kind of fresh and new. Yeah. We call it the rhythmia way. The that's what we call way. it. It's like, okay. cause people, people at the beginning would say, what tradition are you following? We're kind of like, you know, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Like we're kind of making our own tradition. Um, we have traditional healers. We have traditional ayahuasqueros that are here, curanderos, but um, it's, it's our own process because most ayahuasca facilities are just in the jungle. It's one or two nights and then you're done. And that's really powerful because, because one night is usually, they call it the, the bitterness, the first night, like it's the harder night. And then the second night is the sweetness where it's the healing and the love and the, the filling up of all this cool stuff. So we have, we, we draw it out a little bit longer 
because we've seen um, through our sort of data, the way we look at the data of people's outcomes, that it's beneficial to have, kind of go up and down with it for over four nights. So we're studying this whole process while it's happening, you know? Do you, so you're wow. collecting all kinds of data f- based on like what people, people that say they got their miracle, those that didn't, yep. what classes yep. they attended, what classes they didn't. So you can exactly. like, you can like plug an algorithm into that and tell if somebody's going to be successful or not based on what they did while they were there. Exactly. We have, wow. we have mandatory classes and they're mandatory. I say that in air quotes, right. like nothing's mandatory, but classes that we really recommend they go to. Then we have um, optional classes. And so um, we monitor who, the, who attends, which ones they go to. Are they in yoga in the morning or not? Are they in meditation or not? Did they eat lunch? Did they eat breakfast? Um, how is their mood? What was their, what was their um, mental status exam about at the beginning on the front end? You know, did they have depression symptoms? Did they have anxiety? Did they have a history of addiction? And then we follow up with people six months afterwards. Well, for, before the six month follow up, there's a there's an exit survey where they fill out all these questions about how they how their uh, their week was. And we all know they're in the pink cloud at that time. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, so you got to take that with a grain of salt, right? Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Everything's amazing. Yeah, Five stars. Yeah. Right? So, Is so that when you get them to fill it out? <laughs> <laughs> Everybody loves it, right? So, so, <laughs> But six months out is when we really get some great data that I like to look at. And that's where we see if it's still working in their life, if they're still doing okay. If they had nadas, which are ceremonies where nothing apparently happened, how do they feel now? Like, so we look at all this different stuff. So um, the program was very different at the beginning. We used to serve ayahuasca every single day, and we served San Pedro every single morning, which oh, is a derivative of, of peyote, right? We've done and, we've done San Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we imagine like being in an ayahuasca ceremony at night and then in the morning, boom, San Pedro. And then we would do that every single night, and it, you could check in whenever you wanted to any day stay as long as you wanted to. So like that was just chaos. You know, that was at the very beginning. Yeah. We, we were just figuring out how to run this out. place. Yeah. We had to figure it out. And so then we fine tuned it over like, the, you know, took us like three and a half years and then boom, we got it down to four or five years. Then now it's where it's at now. So now you check in on a Saturday or a Sunday and you leave the following Saturday or the Sunday. People can leave before that, but we don't recommend it because they've, they've shortchanged themselves of the whole process. You know, yeah. so we have this, this really specific program that people go through. Do you, do you feel like you found the sweet spot? I think so. Yeah. Because now we're looking to expand in other jurisdictions. And, um, I only wanted to do that once we had like a very solid base Mm. of what this would look like. And we could just kind of bring it somewhere else and do it there in exactly the same way. So we're, I believe we're at that point now. Yes. Go ahead. So for however many thousands of years indigenous folks were taking plant medicine and it was integrated into the fabric of their culture. It was part of their everyday. It was like, we look at Christmas. It's just a thing. It's part of everything. Yeah. Uh, Do you think that ayahuasca itself brought itself out of the jungle to people like us on purpose? I love that question. And that's something I've been thinking about lately. Um, One of our, one of our head shamans said that that's exactly what's happening is that the medicine itself is right now trying to heal the world and it's bringing it forward to other cultures that don't have connection or have lost connection to those medicines. You know, I'm Scottish. So in Scotland back in the day, you know, generations ago, there was all kinds of plant medicines happening. And I don't know what any of those are. I've lost that, right? So there's all these different um, parts of the world that really, really, really need this healing. Mm -hmm. And I do believe that that's what's happening. And it's interesting because everybody, you know, not us here necessarily, but a lot of people think like it's black and white, like, you know, it's either happening or not. I think it's a mix because there are some very unethical shamans and, and, and unethical people that are out there peddling this stuff and not honoring it and not respecting it and not making it, not keeping it sacred or honoring the traditions. And so I think that's um, 
problematic. And so what we've always tried to do, not, not perfectly, but tried to is, is just say, okay, what does the medicine want from us? Like, what is, what is it, what does it want from us in this company with the way we're interacting with guests, the way we talk about it on a podcast, the way we go with other places. Like, I think that's a big part of what has allowed us to stay open, to have success Hmm. and to move forward. Even when all odds have looked like this is impossible. How are we doing this? I mean, I pinch myself all the time. This is crazy. Yeah. Cool. It's, you got the coolest job. I mean, definitely. So <laughs> cool. I, I, I love it. The reason that I asked that it just, because it seems like that's the case. It, the world that we're living in right now is a very tumultuous place. And if your perspective is pointed in that direction, it can seem very dark, but I, I think yes. that there's balance to everything. And, and, Part of that is these medicines making their way out of the jungles to people like us that wouldn't have had the opportunity to come in contact with them. And that energy is, is um, rippling out into the world and, and causing an awakening. I see it. I feel it. I've gotten the downloads about it. Like it's, it's a thing that's, that's really occurring. Um, I agree. I heard um, an interview with you and and Ben. It was like a podcast that I think maybe one of your doctors did. And Ben was mentioning the um, that world is going through like a mass awakening. Can you tell us your thoughts about that and and why you either agree or don't agree with that? And 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 kind of like maybe what your role is in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, what I've learned here, I never learned this at UCLA in my, all the phys- physics classes I took. They never taught us this. But what, 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 I've, what I've learned about vibrational frequencies is very interesting. And the more I've looked into this for my own personal life and other things around me, it, it really makes sense. And I think the awakening is that we're, we're being given opportunities as humans to make a choice and to be on a path of in, improving our frequency and raising it. And we raise it by not drinking alcohol in excess or at all. We raise it by having positive relationships. We raise it by making good decisions. We raise it by all these different things. Plant medicine is already at a very high frequency. It's, it's at a perfect frequency of nature. We take it into our body and then it helps our body raise too. Mm-hmm. So um, the awakening that's happening, I believe, is happening right before our very eyes. And, and I think that when you see people that are like not awake, um, they're kind of like robotic in a way. Once you have this new perspective, you know, I grew up in Los Angeles and there's a very, a lot of robotic people there, you know, all over the world there are, but in LA, I mean, it's just like, there's this industry there that's at a very low frequency. Mm. And, and I think the choice then for people is to kind of like follow the things that are resonating with them, that are making them feel better and giving them peace and, mm. and happiness. And it's, it's, it's almost sort of too easy in a way because it, you should do things that feel, that feel good to you and feel right and feel peaceful and full of love. And I think that's, that's kind of like the, the navigation point, the compass are those emotions and, you know, anything that, that leads to like greed or anger, you know, that, that's not appropriate or, you know, in a, in a trauma inducing things. That's like, that's going the other path. So I definitely see people from all over the world who come through here at Rhythmia. We have, we have people from all over Asia, all over the Middle East. We have people from Israel. We have people from Dubai. We have, I mean, you name it, everywhere they're coming here from Russia. We have lots of Ukrainians come here wow. that live in Kiev. I mean, it's wow. crazy. Wow. And they're coming and they're just like getting this healing. And then they're going back home and they're, they're creating a ripple effect. It's, it's really cool to watch. Yeah, wow. man. That's amazing. Another thing I wanted to ask you about is the Ikoros, the, the musical com, um, component. And I mean, in medical school, was there anything about music to help well, heal? Yeah. Um, well, when I was doing the, when I was doing the psychology doctorate, my buddy, Carlos Protzel, he's one of my best friends in school. He actually did his dissertation on the therapeutic benefits of music frequency. So um, now there's much more about it than there was when we were in school. But I think that, you know, when you're lost or feel sort of like you're stuck in a plant medicine ceremony somehow, and you're maybe feeling overwhelmed. 
um, the music brings you back to yourself and it mm -hmm. brings you back to the medicine. And it's because of the frequencies, I believe, and the and everything that's involved in the music. And the Icaros are are prayers and they're they're chants and they're prayers to for safety and for guidance and all that kind of stuff, protection. So the musical part is very important, very, 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 you know. So we love having the live music that we that we show here at Rhythmia. Hmm. Wow. You know, after having folks from all over the world come through Rhythmia. And I'm sure that you have a million stories, but is there maybe one miraculous story that you can tell us about that really stuck with you that you've seen? Yeah, we had a lady from Vietnam um, come <laughs> and she was about my age. So I'm 54. So she was about my age. And, you know, her family had been, her generational lineage had been decimated in the Vietnam War and all kinds of pain and her parents and there nobody she was by herself basically and you know she was running the family farm in vietnam and you know just you know she had some workers and but she was just living a very agricultural life very connected to the earth but she was just alone and and sad and had lots of trauma from a little girl going through all that stuff over there mm -hmm. during that time even though she was very little, it still affected her obviously greatly. She was in foster care for a bit and then returned to Vietnam. At, she was in LA for or Orange County for a while as a little girl and then returned later as a, as a teenager. So a lot of pain, a lot of trauma. And so she came through our program on a whim because she just saw some of our Facebook live videos, you know, and she just had this feeling that she should come to Rhythmia. She didn't really understand where she didn't speak English. Like she, she didn't really, really know what we were talking about, but she just felt something oh, wow. that was calling her. So she came here. She was this beautiful, amazing person, very spiritually strong and powerful, but she didn't feel that she was, you know, she felt very, um, very weak. Actually, she felt that way, but she was just this amazing person. She went through the whole thing, drank ayahuasca all four nights, had all these breakthroughs. And now she's back in Vietnam, um, serving medicine Whoa. to her local community. Wow. Yeah. And she's, she's doing it in a, in a great way. And it's like a, it's like a, you come to her place and you can live there and work there and, and participate. I mean, it's just this really cool. It's like, a, it's like almost like a, an indigenous experience, you know, for her. So that's, that's something that really stands out for me. It was able to that's, almost like a satellite experience that she can create over there in her part of the world. Well, that, that speaks volumes too. to like, like she didn't even speak English. She didn't even really quite understand, but she felt the frequency, the, the call. plant yes. medicine calling call. her like you need yeah. to come here. Wow. Do you, do you yeah. hear a lot of folks coming through saying that they're called? Yes, that's a big part of it. And that the medicine is working on them before they even get on the plane to come here. Right. That's the wildest thing. Like they'll say, that I've had all these lucid dreams. I'm even purging a little bit. I'm like, wow, you know, we hear about this as they prepare to come because we give them recommendations before they come, like to follow a certain way of eating right. and certain things. Um, and then they'll just be like, man, the medicine's already working. And, you know, and, and it's definitely a, something that, that is hitting them before they even get here. Well, I we did dieta for, <laughs> for San Pedro. And I know just that mm -hmm. dieta. Very uh, elevated. You get, you get tweaked just from that. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. That was, wasn't <laughs> before we ever even drank the medicine. And, and we, we, yeah. we learned to, we learned too, no, cause we all followed it oh. and did good. But there was somebody else in our group that was a friend of the person leading it. It was like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I did the dieta and he, Kind of like, oh, mm. we'll see. And he had a rough time. Yeah, it was throwing evening. up. Yeah, he was not well. Yeah. We we're like, oh, yeah. yeah, follow the instructions when you do this stuff. <laughs> yeah. there, there, there's a dieta for a reason. Yeah. 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 So, so for those. Wait, I want to ask one more question. Okay. Um, because you mentioned um, your the app that you send that everybody gets when they go there. And that's yep. for like three months. So you mentioned uh, meditation, breath work, and therapy. Can you just lightly touch on why that's important for integration for people who don't know why breath work would, I mean, I think that it's a lot more out there now that people understand um, that it can be important, but for people who maybe haven't practiced it or haven't really gotten their, you know, medi meditation training wheels on, you know, like why is that yeah. so important for the integration part? 
Good. So we believe that all disease, all mental health issues, all addiction, all unrest that's personal and emotional that we have is because we are unplugged or dissociated to some degree from our true self. So we're living in, a, in an unplugged state kind of naturally in life. And not everybody, yeah. but a lot of us. And so when you, when you connect with yourself and heal all of that and you're plugged in, you're no longer dissociated, the goal of integration really means just to stay in that space as much as you can. Mm. Now, it's not necessarily practical because you're working, you got the family, you got bills, you got traffic, and there's you know, the stressors of society, which are normal. Yeah. So having a practice where you can connect with yourself periodically, even if it's for five minutes once in a while, is a huge part of integration because when you're connected, you're no longer looking for reasons to stay unplugged or looking mm. for reasons to kind of plug in that might be substance abuse related because that's what substances do. They'll, they'll connect you and superficially or they'll push you away. Mm. So there's kind of like this push-pull thing. So breath work, meditation, all of these things that we offer in the app, they help people connect to themselves. And breath work is the ultimate because you're just, it's part of you. You can run it yourself. You can self-regulate. It takes 10 minutes the way we teach it here. And it's just this beautiful practice that helps you just have a lot of self-physical awareness. And so it's connecting, it's, it's aligning your body. And I, it's funny if I even say the word chakras, because I don't even really know what all that means, but it, it's just <laughs> aligning all of the energy sources of your body in, a, in an intentional way will help you not be unplugged and help you integrate everything you've learned and the tools that you've gotten at Rhythmia, you can start to employ them. Yeah, totally makes uh -huh. sense. So uh, I want, can I ask one last, yeah. I, want to, I want to ask one last question too. This, it, is, this is kind of a sidetrack on that. I, I work, I'm also 54. We'll be turning 55 in May. Um, All right, I, me too, 55 I, I, in I, May. When you said that earlier, really in May also? Cinco de Mayo. Oh, right May on, I'm May 26th. Right on. Uh, All right, cool. My question, I, I, I work in the cannabis industry up here in, or we're in Portland, Oregon. And nice. uh, my, my whole life, I've used cannabis since I was 13, you know, and mm -hmm. I, I'm on no medications. I'm relatively mm -hmm. healthy other than, you know, not exercising enough, things like that. And I've always, my whole life, uh, cannabis was always looked at as like a gateway drug. What I see now, eight years of doing this, it has become, it's a gateway drug, but it also, it's the most common, no, commonly known like plant medicine, the most commonly yes. abused, but I, sure. I'm seeing people come in and they, you know, they, they get a lotion or something. Next thing they're taking gummies and then they, then they're questioning about mushrooms. And so I'm just curious as a doctor, what your take is on cannabis and society and opening things mm -hmm. up or not i think cannabis is an amazing uh medicine and it's a blessing and there's so many benefits of it and i believe that all plant medicines and all all things in general that the earth gives us when they're used intentionally they're they're good and there's lots of people that use cannabis unintentionally, meaning they'll just yeah. use it to veg out and do nothing. And sometimes that's okay too, but. <laughs> but sometimes but, you need that. Well, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you need that. Better than yeah. liquor. You, that's for sure. That's for sure. Now the shamans will say that um, all of these plants will compete with each other for your attention. Oh. So I found that okay. to be very interesting. Oh, wow. So um, there's no, there's no danger in having a cannabis um, practice and then drinking ayahuasca, it's, there's no contraindications, nothing like that. But what we recommend for people that are gonna drink ayahuasca is that if they can taper it off or use it a little bit less than normal, then that's good. And then just because they have full, the full experience of the ayahuasca will be able to, to take through. Now, we've had lots of people that smoke a lot of cannabis right up until the day they come and they have an amazing experience. So it's not like, it's not like yeah. that's a requirement, you right. know? But, I believe that, um, you know, especially like, for example, my mom would never in the old days ever think that cannabis would be anything good yeah. until her nephew had a seizure disorder, my cousin. Mm -hmm. And then the CBD and the cannabis and all those cannabinoids were the only thing that helped him. Wow. And so that's what shifted her opinion, of course. And now she's totally on board. And as a lot of people are that are oh maybe God. more conservative about it. And so I think that cannabis when it's used intentionally, 
is a gateway into lots of healing modalities if you mm-hmm. want to be on that path. So I'm a big, big fan. I don't actually smoke it very often. I have, but it's not kind of, I, I don't do it that often. Um, even though the weed here in Costa Rica is really good. I don't want to keep one more questioning you to death, but um, you, <laughs> you, okay. just, yeah, I love these <laughs> you mentioned um, contraindications. Can you um, yes. talk about um, not only yeah. contraindications, but some of the challenges of ayahuasca, not just the benefits, yes. oh, but a yeah. few of the of challenges and maybe contraindications as well. Absolutely. So because the vine component of ayahuasca, as I mentioned, is the what we call a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, what, what MAOIs are for um, in, in dead, um, endogenous, so naturally, is what they're for is they're, they turn off the stomach enzymes. So they make it so the stomach doesn't break down the substance or the active ingredient of choice. And so um, that's what allows absorption of DMT. So if somebody is on SSRI medication mm-hmm. for depression, so selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, those contraindicate with MAOIs. Mm. And so we have to have people come off of their SSRIs and be off of them for at least 30 days. Oh, wow. Now, um, that's hard for a lot of people. Um, some people, it's not recommended to do that because when they, when they tried it before, maybe they, their anxiety went through the roof and maybe they got suicidal or they relapsed or who knows what, right? So um, we always recommend they, they talk to their prescribing physician. Now, the problem is, Nowadays, physicians are a little bit more open to it, but you know, not that long ago, three years ago, physicians were like, I am not going to be liable for taking you off anything. And so yeah. They, were, yeah. they were very resistant to trying to get their patients off meds. But a lot of physicians are seeing now the benefits of these plant medicines. We have a physicians here every single week. There's health professionals that come as, as guests that come through here. And, and so uh, the SSRIs create what's called a serotonin syndrome. And that's dangerous. So that's why we have to have people not on those meds. And the other psychotropic meds that are problematic are benzodiazepines like Xanax and Clonopin and Valium. And those aren't as severe. Um, those can just have something to do with lowering the heart rate during an ayahuasca session. So we have 14 days off for, off of those. And then the, the stimulants like Adderall and, and Ritalin and those kind of things, also 14 days off just because that can increase heart rate too much. So um, those are kind of the, the med things. And then uh, heart-related conditions, they're contraindicated. If someone has um, a stint in their heart mm-hmm. or a pacemaker or they've had open-heart surgery, um, and arrhythmias, which is mm. hilarious. That the, I mean, <laughs> our company's called Rhythmia. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, uh, an, an arrhythmia is problematic. Right? <laughs> Makes yeah. sense. Don't come to Rhythmia if you've got an arrhythmia. Do not do it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Correct. Correct. It's, uh, and then on the mental health side, there's two conditions that are uh, problematic. One of them is bipolar one. Okay. Not bipolar two. Bipolar two has been totally fine. And that's where people are mostly depressed and once in a while get manic. And then bipolar one is the opposite. So they're mostly manic once in a while get depressed. Mm. And so the reason for that is because um, if they're manic a lot, they likely have a high level of serotonin naturally in their body. And if you give them ayahuasca, that'll shoot it through the roof. And then it's just kind of like not, they're just out there. It's just not safe. So, um, and also people that have bipolar one, are usually on a lot of meds because their behavior is so unmanageable. You know, if they're not on meds, they're often running down the street naked saying they're Jesus. Right. right? So, so that's, so they're very severe and it's not a common disorder. The bipolar two is what gets labeled. A lot of people bipolar two, but um, bipolar one is a no go just because of the risk of a manic psychosis. And then the other condition is schizophrenia, which I find very interesting why it's a no because um, there was one study done in Armenia, of all places, which is very cool. Okay. And they gave people that had schizophrenia, they gave them ayahuasca. There was like 18 people. And the, 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 the participants said, we don't notice anything different at all. Oh, no. <laughs> so, so what ended up happening with DMT studies and ayahuasca <laughs> studies back in the 70s is they started to, to look at those substances to understand the psychosis of the brain and help them understand these disorders. So it was used in a way to kind of like figure out like, why is someone schizophrenic? What is it like? What's going on neurochemically? Because the brainwave patterns and the, the, the MRI scans 
show that there's different parts of the brain lighten up when someone has schizophrenia and the same ones are lighting up when someone has is drinking ayahuasca. Now the, the next common thought from probably your listeners is what's going to make me go crazy then. Right. right. <laughs> but the good, the good news is that no, because in the Western world, we view schizophrenia as this horrible mental illness that doesn't fit into society and people are just out there and they're, they're not, they're not being successful. So they either belong in a psych unit or a group home, heavily medicated, and they're just a burden. And that's unfortunately the way the West views those people in an indigenous culture. Those people are the spiritually connected ones. They're the ones that are the, that are the mediums that are the, the vessels for the spiritual presence of whatever the mm-hmm. tribe believes in. So I view um, people that have schizophrenia very differently because I used to work in a psych unit in Pasadena called Las Encinas. I would walk in there and I had a, pace, a caseload. I'd do rounds. And I was the, like one of the only psychologists in there that actually like listened to the patients because they were telling wild stories. And you could say, well, in a clinical way, they're nonsensical. But to me, they weren't. They were just these beautiful, amazing wild experiences they were talking about. And all I did was just listen and show respect to them. And because of that, they would deescalate. They would follow the rules. They would do art. They would talk and have, they would write poetry. I mean, it was just beautiful. And it was just the way that it was uh, that I approached them, you know? And so that's something that's contraindicated, but not because of the same reason as a bipolar one. It's very different. And the, the, actually take so like i was asking a few minutes ago for those people that are listening that are like you know what i i'm curious i want to i think i might want to try this i think i might be called what does it look like when you like a typical arrival at rhythmia can you take me through like the first couple of days yeah absolutely so everybody flies into this one particular airport and in the northern pacific side called liberia and we have a shuttle we have eight shuttles that pick up the guests. We have your name. We know who you are. And all of our staff are wearing Rhythmia logo shirts and signs and on the shuttle. So, you know, people get a little nervous when they go to a foreign country. They don't know like what's going on at the airport. So we have a, we have a whole system at the airport, pick everybody up. It's about an hour drive through a beautiful area of Costa Rica. You show up, you go through an orientation where you learn about all the classes that are being offered. We show you the spa and all the different amenities. You have a very nice room and we do a medical intake. So within the first couple hours of being there, you go through a triage with our nurses. You go through a little clinical interview with our doctors and then you get cleared and we open up a chart on you like you would at any clinic and you have a chart and we just fill it out real quick and you sign the consents and then you go into a breathwork session that first night, you know, after having maybe some lunch and you're in a breathwork at 530. And you have this, you know, most people have never done that before either. So our, our staff are teaching people how to do it. It's this beautiful way to kickstart the week. And then Monday morning, first thing, 930 in the morning, there's a class that teaches them how to set intentions, what to expect with the plant medicine, where the bathrooms are, where your bucket is, <laughs> if you need it. <laughs> and about 50% of the people will actually throw up while they're here once or twice. Not everybody does. Um, some people purge through um, going to the bathroom or just yawning even or sweating. So throwing up's not the only thing. So, um, and then after that first night of medicine, when it's done around two in the morning or so, uh, then there's a class in the morning called The Answer Is You. And that's a curriculum from Michael Beckwith, who's part of our team. He's part of our company. And then um, and then you have a, an integration class and you have, probably have a massage. And so that's how those first few days work and it kind of just continues. So it's very nice. It's relaxing. The grounds are beautiful. There's a lot of downtime. And and if we have a guest speaker here, then there's a really cool lecture that we might have for an hour. You know, if it's optional, if you want to go, that's kind of how how it looks. Wow. It sounds amazing. So where, where can people go if they want to find out more? There's multiple ways. Um, you can just go into Google search and just type in Rhythmia Life Advancement Center and then up will pop our website with an 800 number. You just call and book your stay. If you can't afford it, you can fill out a scholarship application. You can talk to the, the, the intake guys on how to do that. And it's all online. We also have Facebook, Rhythmia Facebook and Instagram. 
So those are all great ways you can just easily get a hold of us, you know, and we're ready to take the call. And Dr. Jeff, wow. is there anything that you want people to know that we forgot yeah. to ask about or, or just didn't, you know, mention? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, we were talking a little bit about how, you know, these days people can really look at the world in a negative way. It's really easy to do that right now. There's so much happening. It's just wild, you know? And, and I believe that the way the world changes is that you have to develop true empathy, but you can't really have empathy for anybody else if you don't have a self love and a connection with yourself. And so everybody wants to maybe heal the world, but how do you do it? You know, where everybody wants, what's the first step to it? Well, the first step is healing yourself. You have to heal yourself. And then once you're healed and you know, it's a work in progress, nobody's perfect. We're we get to a certain point where we're healing ourselves and then you can go out and really have empathy. And what empathy is, is feeling someone else's emotional state. So if I am healed and I feel pain and sadness in my, the people around me, I don't want to feel that. I don't want them. I don't want that for them. So I'm going to behave in a way that's going to help support those people to not feel sad or upset yeah. because I'm feeling it with them. And I'd like to have everybody feel happy and loved and productive. And so I believe that's the way the world changes one person at a time, just getting that healing. You know, that's what rhythm is about. Yeah. I, I, you know, coming up in the psychedelic scene and the grateful dead world and all that, you know, we always, heard stories you know there's going to be this awakening i remember like the hopi prophecies and all this stuff and i i always thought it was going to be this like watershed like huge moment where there would just be this mass awakening and everybody you know and it, it, turning out that that's not quite the case it's kind of a slow roll and it, and it's really beautiful when you take a look at what's going on man so it's like a, it's like the Buckminster Fuller Buckyball model, which is <laughs> right, right, which is you're gonna you're gonna grow the new world on top of the existing yeah. one, right? That's that's, totally. that's the that's the way. I think that's the way it's happening. You know, hey, it seems like it. Well, yeah, I, I, we've tried to punch holes in this whole thing the whole time. We were the skeptics that are trying to punch holes in this, and <laughs> we couldn't do it. Good job. I'm, <laughs> Thank you. I'm really Thank proud you. of you. Like not right on. not just for that but, but i like to think that i'm i'm definitely on that that vibe that empathy train that healing yourself and healing others i'm you know in the healing industry myself and i am always looking for new ways or or new thoughts on how to become better myself or to help other people to help direct people and I really feel like today that we've got a new place to send people to or to at awesome. least consider. And I want to thank you for that because yeah. I really feel like we I dug in. I appreciate it. You guys are you guys are so cool. It was such a pleasure <laughs> talking <laughs> to you. To be honest. Yeah, like, seriously, right I love it. It was, it was great. I could talk all day with right? you. You guys, are, you guys are invited. <laughs> you guys are invited to come to Rhythmia thank anytime you, you want to come. Just let us know. Abby can hook you up. We'll, we'll get you guys down here at some point. Right, right on, on, man. I thank you, Josh. Really I, I visited it. Costa Rica, and I, I would love to come back down there, especially. that I've always been sketchy about ayahuasca because, like, going to the middle of a jungle in Peru <laughs> kind of yeah. thing I'm is is intriguing but also very very scary so man yes. th thank yes. you for what you do yeah. and i hope to visit there yeah. absolutely thank you jeff we oh yes yeah, we really <laughs> take care of yourself brother we'll talk right soon on, man. man we'll okay. let you know when this is nice coming out you. happy All early right. birthday <laughs> take it easy that's brother. right you have a good one <laughs> wow man Dr. We, Jeff's cool, man. We did. We tried it. We before Dr. We, Jeff, I hope you hear this very end. Yep. We were trying to like, all right, we're going to ask him this, this, and this and see if he can say, <laughs> and it was awesome. Your yeah, eyes, the, the second time or the, the first time you opened your eyes and we got on the, on the call with you, it I was, was like, like oh, yeah. A couple, and a couple of the things that we were talking about addressing, he addressed it before yeah. we had a chance to. Yeah. yeah. So like, wow. Yeah, man. Thanks again for what you're doing. And, and I remember Aaron a while back, we had a conversation and you were like, man, I don't know about like, you know, psychedelics going into the medical field and like in some stark old room. And I just don't know how I feel about it. Do you remember that? Yeah. We were talking about ketamine therapy. We were talking about, yeah. And him, they've been open for eight years. And so three, three and a half of that was kind of perfecting how to do it properly. 
and coming up with the model that they have come up with. And there's always baby steps. It's always going to look clunky Yeah, at you're first. not going to open the place in day one. Okay, nailed it. Straight out the gate. Nothing to improve. No. We're good here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think that like going to the lengths of flying across the world to a South American country to take plant medicine with a bunch of strangers is a very, um, like how they say, if you do what you always did, you get what you always got. Yeah. Yeah. You are at that point you're reaching out. Yes. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yes. and, and, and to the, to the extreme. So it stands to reason that the result from that thing would be as big as the effort to make it happen. Well, do I you, mean, do you get where I'm coming from? Yes, but if the people or the thing that you're reaching out to oh, is, is, full is, of shit. is legit, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've yeah, all heard they're <laughs> shaman. Yeah, we've all heard. Um, well, maybe not everybody, but the three of us here have heard some pretty harrowing tales of shaman doing shady shit. Oh yeah, and that that's one thing that I did before we had them on when when they reached out was tried to find some of that stuff and there was none of that out there no and, and when it's positive. out when it's out there you can't bury it no no so you know, it's, the internet it's there somewhere forever, as they say no it's, so, it's very solid yeah if if you're listening and and you've felt the call of ayahuasca and and or have been feeling or it or have been feeling it and you just weren't sure i i i haven't been there but i just met one of the head guys and so did you yeah. And uh, I, I think that this would be a viable option for you. Um, and I just want to mention um, money about like, uh-oh. because think about this. Say you want a new car and you want like your windows to go up and down. You want a, you want an alarm. You want, you know, a hybrid. You want this, that and the other. Do you really think that they're going to take a couple hundred dollars for that? What you are expecting? No. That kind of luxury and that kind of <laughs> sportsman and workmanship does not cost a few hundred bucks. No, you're going to get an 82 Corolla with no right? windows. <laughs> so in the same way, when we're reaching out to like transform our life, I'm not saying that you should be gouged, but there's also like tit for tat and that you're going to have to pay for something that is going to transform your life yeah. and so if you look at things like you know like w- this is not inexpensive but it's also not the most expensive too you know you you're, think about what he just talked about like going on vacation you're going to this gorgeous resort type thing all this stuff right like this is an investment in you period well and and f- i'm a little bougie i don't want to stay in a in a shitty motel six well, when we go on vacation i want to stay in a nice hotel what, what well, I, especially for doing plant medicine yes. and purging yes. and everything you want to you want to f- be able to clean up and feel like you're in a clean environment you don't want to be laying in the doo-doo muck <laughs> fucking with no showers and you go rest on a fucking pile of hay in the barn or something i mean yeah, that, they, hey for some people man that might be what they need but and, yeah, and, and you high. heard about the staff <laughs> <laughs> you heard him talk about the staffing on how like there's a you know paramedics there's doctors there's the staff like everything costs money so I, I, I just know I'm saying this for myself because I know that I am always skeptical when it when things cost a lot of money. I'm like, well, why isn't it free? Well, why isn't it this much? Or why does we have to pay so much? And that for my own head, I feel like that's why I'm explaining this or that's why I'm touching on it. Because if you expect something great to happen, if you expect a huge transformation to happen, then expect to shell out appropriately because you will find value in that. Ooh. What and I, and I like because I said at the beginning I was like that's one thing I want I was like would it be wrong to ask him about you know financial aid and stuff for people that can't afford it's one of the things he addressed immediately within like the first that's ten minutes dope. well and it's one of their- I saw that on the website I wasn't sure what the you know I didn't go on to fill out a scholarship thing but I saw the scholarship thing on there it's right there it. on the if website you, you see it right away so that's so here's how the can, bottom line if you want it you can get it yes. Yeah. And, and what's it worth to you? And, Absolutely. And, and yeah. So everybody, you, you heard him. That's Jeff, Dr. Jeff from Rhythmia down in Costa Rica. Um, 
doing doing the Lord's work, as they say. And um, yeah, I, I'll say he's doing um, the plant medicines work. Well, one in the same. <laughs> um, all right. So we will be back um, next week on Monday with another episode of the No Simple Road Weekly Rewind. Come hang out with us. It's just the three of us hanging out and talking about stuff. It's pretty cool. It's it, no guest. It's just us and the dog and, and him farting and Lick, licking the floor. Licking the floor like he's doing right yeah. now. <laughs> All right. Um, take care of yourselves, everybody, and smile at a stranger and take care of each other. Yeah. S- safety third. Hydrate. Love yourself. And uh, do do your research before you do always, stuff. Because, always do your due because, diligence. Because there's, there's sh- sh- shysty, shysty folks out well, there in the world. And, and, but there's also... Wonderfully beautiful. There's people. everything in the world. Just remember that. How about that? Yeah. And and Darwin said, not just love your dogs, love your pets. That's his message. <laughs> oh, all right. We'll see y'all next week. We love y'all. Peace. Bye. This is Krista Makes, guitarist and vocalist for Less Than Jake, and host of Krista Makes a Podcast, a songwriting podcast where every week I'm joined by an amazing guest to break down the writing, recording, and release of one iconic song from their career. In our giant, evergreen back catalog of episodes, we've had rock legends such as Dee Snyder and Huey Lewis, punk rock favorites like Mark Hoppus, Fat Mike, and Brett Gurowitz, and up-and-coming artists of today such as Liz Stokes of The Beths, and Genesis Owusu. We've had guests from all genres and styles of music, and I guarantee that if you peruse our back catalog, you'll see several episodes that'll make you say, man, I gotta hear that. Whether you're a fan of music or a creator of music yourself, you'll take away a whole new appreciation for the songs you know and love. Chris Makes a Podcast is available for free on all the places you could possibly listen to podcasts, and new episodes come out every Monday.